Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ. This is 138 of the Knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull, or at least the questions we pick out for this particular episode. This week, I'm getting a little bit nostalgic and talking about nice old school and new school whittling knives. Let's get into it. All right, if you're new to this series, welcome. Talking about uh, nostalgia, step up to the, the campfire, sit down, grab your whittler, and let's get to town. But if you're unfamiliar with what we do here, uh, we answer questions that are left in the comments section below these videos. So if you've got a question and you think it might be worthy of inclusion in a future episode, drop it down below for consideration. Thank you so much in advance. First question today comes from AG, AJVC2233. Uh, looking for a first knife for my teen daughter. She is interested in whittling. Do you have any suggestions for a non-fidgety pocket knife she could also use while camping and whittling? Thanks. Uh, sure thing. Um, we're gonna talk non-fidgety here, so I'm gonna stick to uh, two-hand openers, about as non-fidgety as it gets. and. Uh, coincidentally, also happens to dovetail really nicely into the kind of romantic notion of whittling, which for me is, is like that, you know, staple campfire side, you know, activity. You got your block of wood, you got your knife, and you're just carving away. Uh, sometimes you just make a nice little lumpy looking thing, but, you know, the more skilled amongst us can do uh, great things indeed. We've talked about whittling knives a little bit on this series before, way, way back in the, uh, the beginning of the series. Um, but this is a way to, to kind of look at it a little bit differently. You want something that's not just a specialized whittler, but something great around camp. And we'll start with one of my most frequent recommendations uh, from the Swiss Army Knife catalog, from the Victorinox catalog. Uh, any of the kind of standard sized uh, synthetic scaled models, the Celador models with the two blades, my favorite for a general purpose camping and crafting outdoor utility knife being the Huntsman in that regard. About uh, 50 bucks nowadays, and here is the key bits right here. You've got your shorter pen blade, which honestly, that's your primarily primary whittler right there. When you need more range, if you need to hog off bigger chunks of uh, wood, you might go with the larger blade for that. But whittling is all about you know, small cuts, precision, and this small pen blade is great for that. The other great thing about uh, this pen blade on this Victor on Victorinox in particular is the steel they use. It's a simple stainless. Uh, it's not, you know, too toothy. It'll take a nice fine edge. And for me, whittling, you want a nice, fine, highly sharp edge. Edge retention is a little bit secondary as long as you can get it and keep it at a real real screaming sharp edge, your life is gonna be a lot easier. On top of that, the camp uses here are fantastic. You know, you've got a bottle opener and a can opener for your food and beverages that may require those. Screwdriver tips, of course, on those. Scissors, always useful, and wood saw there, always useful for an outdoor thing. Parcel hook, awl, and screwdriver, or a corkscrew on the back. Corkscrew, useful for holding uh, their fire ant fire starters also great in the outdoors, and great for uh, untying stubborn knots, kind of like a marlin spike, even if you never need to open a, uh, a bottle of wine with it. And of course, toothpick and tweezers, you know, ticks and all. It's not the uh, the greatest pair of tweezers in the world, but it does in a, what is it, Thomas? I'm not gonna say it. In a pinch, that's right. Check out the Huntsman, it is phenomenal. Uh, always a good choice. Beyond that, old school slip joints. Is there anything more kind of synonymous with that image of you know sitting on the stoop or sitting by the fire whittling than an old school slip joint. In my mind at least, there is not. So check this out. This is the medium Stockman from Case. It comes in about $63 for this version with yellow synthetic handles, also a nice nostalgic choice in my mind. And for me, for this task specifically, carbon steel blades. I like that over there stainless because again, you can get a finer edge with the carbon here than with the uh, the stainless that they use. You know, you're dealing with harder carbides in this in that material, whereas the carbon is very clean. You can get a nice keen edge very easily. I like that. And this assortment of blades works great. You've got your 
uh, sheep's foot style blade here, which with its straight edge can be quite useful. You've got a smaller blade here on the side for the smaller whittling stuff with the belly out there near the tip enables kind of slightly different cuts than the straight edge over here. You can modify this a little bit if you want to. And then even the main blade here, let me close this back up so I can get to that one safely, is kind of that muskrat style of long clip point. The narrow slenderness here I like uh, for a whittler specifically versus some of the, uh, the larger, uh, broader clip point shapes you can get, which are still good. Don't get me wrong, but I like this a little bit better. And lastly, if you do want something that locks, uh, something that's a little more premium in this case, but is very cool for a, uh, a whittling knife and just a small camp folder, that is the Castrum Lars Felt Lockback. Here it is. Uh, comes in about $155. This is made in Sweden. You've got about a three inch Scandi ground blade. And Scandi's work phenomenally carving wood. So you've got something that is very, very well suited towards that activity. A Little bit thicker here than the, uh, the thinner blades you're dealing with uh, on the uh, slip joints we just looked at, but that Scandi grind makes up for that a little bit by kind of acting like a double planed chisel when you're going to town, very nice. Wood handles, this is curly birch. You've got a lock back here at the back, two hand opening as you saw, not a uh, fidgety thing at all and comfy in the hands, especially if your hands are a little smaller than mine. My slightly larger than average hands kind of crowd this a little bit. Even so, I'd be very happy myself whittling long stretches with this. N690 steel here, it is a stainless. Um, so, you know, not quite as, as kind of clean and, and fine grained as some of my favorites in this uh, genre, but still quite fit for purpose. Hope these help. Next up, Jellybean Gamer says, is there a foldable knife, preferably with a four to five inch blade that's good for whittling, $30 budget. Um, so I'll, I'll start off by saying, yes, there are stuff in $30, under $30 that work well for whittling, but a four to five inch blade, in my mind anyway, is honestly way too big for whittling. Um, other kind of wood processing stuff, general camp stuff, or, and, and other just general wood shaping stuff, yes, but to me, whittling is, whittling is about small, precise cuts. That being said, I will show you some options here, even if, uh, even if I disagree with your premise, but that's okay. Um, and this answer would actually work great uh, for the, uh, the teen girl in the first uh, question as well. Just, I would suggest using a smaller one, but that's just me again. Open O. Pretty much any of the wood handled Open O range, they're insanely comfortable. And that plays a big part and whether you are having fun whittling versus kind of tearing up, tearing up your hands. And all the first three uh, options I showed here are pretty comfortable, but nothing beats whittling comfort of an open O handle. Just phenomenal. This is the number 12. It comes in at $27. You can get carbon or stainless, and I'm really happy with the stainless option that open L gives us for a whittling knife specifically. It's Sandvix 12C27, very clean, very fine grained, takes a screaming edge very easily, kind of similar in ways uh, to carbon steel, that kind of Sandvix family, it, your 13C26, and to a certain extent, their 14C28N as well. Very good uh, alternatives to a carbon steel if you want some stainless for this type of thing. But you've got five inch blade here, clip point shape, ring lock for safety and big old handles. But you can see what I mean if you kind of envision you've got a small hunk of wood here, you're shaping, doing things to, this is a lot of blade to maneuver. So I, I would relegate this to kind of larger work for that sort of thing. But any open L of any size is always gonna feel very comfortable and the small ones especially great whittlers. If you'd rather have uh, something like this, kind of that classic slip joint look. This is also an option for about $28. This is <clears throat> $28, sorry. Uh, the 227UH, Uncle Henry Next Gen Traditional. It's a series, the 227UH is this model. It is a large two blade trapper right there. About a four inch blade on these. You've got a kind of standard style clip point and more of that almost muskratty style. Maybe that one's more of a California clip. It's hard to tell sometimes but you've got not real stag at this price point, uh, synthetic stag handles, but they have a really classic look. 
for 27 bucks, 28 bucks, this is a lot of knife for what you're getting. The steel uh, is simple. It is 7CR stainless. Again, think about what you're paying for this though. Definitely going to hone very easily and keep you going. And this comes with a belt pouch too, uh, which is gonna be a little bit easier to carry than the open L, I would say, which in this case does not come with a pocket clip. None of them do really, uh, or a belt sheath. So this is uh, taking up quite a bit of space in your pocket or your bag. If you're carrying it in your bag, less of an issue, of course. But I hope those help. Check out the open L range. Good stuff all around. All right, next question comes from Bill Macy. Hey DCA, 50 or so years ago as a young boy, I remember sitting with my grandfather in his yard as he patiently taught me how to whittle with his treasured Russell Barlow. What modern whittling knife would you recommend that would capture that simpler time? There it is, man, that, that romanticized simpler time, I feel it too. I mean, that, that's what this is all about to me. Uh, the cool thing is if you really want to re, you know, kind of try and recapture that, those classic styles of knives are still available. I mean, check out, you know, Case's lineup, uh, Schrade's lineup, even more affordable, not quite as good uh, fit and finish wise as the Case stuff, but there's affordable options that, that really strike at the heart of that sort of thing. But you ask for something a little more modern. So let's try to blend the two aesthetics or the two ethoses, shall we say, of the classic slip joint, but modern construction, modern amenities. And there's a few brands uh, right at the tip of my tongue. The first, if you wanna stick with a slip joint mechanism, Jack Wolf. They're doing phenomenal stuff with modernly specced, uh, modernly constructed slip joints. This is their laid back jack. It features a Warncliffe blade S90V, which, you know, if we're talking whittling, you know, I might prefer a tougher steel than S90V or M390, that sort of thing. But you, you can still do the job with this sort of thing. The fit and finish on these is phenomenal. We've got titanium with a faux, with a jigged pattern, not even a faux jig pattern, with a uh, machined pattern to look like jigging right there, pulling back the, uh, the classic aesthetic right there. Great feel on the opening and closing. Everything they do, they do is top notch. It's priced accordingly too. I mean, this is about a $300 knife, uh, so keep that in mind, but man, their stuff is, you know, strikes at the heart of that, you know, vintage modern mashup right there. Uh, another brand that, um, maker specifically, I should say, that has really made a lot of, of good stuff and kind of made his name, in my opinion at least, mar marrying up those two genres as well is Enrique Pena. Right now we have, uh, this is the only production model we have on the site right now. We've got a few of his customs though you can take a look at. Uh, this is his X series Raptor. And it has the same kind of sway back handle that the, uh, the um, Jack Wolf <laughs> that we just showed uh, has as well. Kind of a uh, reverse Tonto blade shape, Thomas. Right. It's your favorite thing ever. Uh, M390 steel here. And this one, he, he has done several uh, slip joints quite well, but this one is a locking mechanism. We've got that bolster style frame lock right there. We've got flipping action out the wazoo. I mean, it goes great. And it has a bit of that vibe, but a bit of that modern vibe too. The micarta there kind of contrasts really nicely to the uh, kind of high-tech titanium. It makes it feel a little more rugged, a little more rustic. And you can't go wrong with, uh, with Enrique's stuff for that style that you're looking for. Uh, if you want something more affordable though, uh, these are about 274 bucks. Uh, another brand that, that kind of lives off of this intersection as well is a uh, Finch, a uh, Finch knife company. This right here is their Hatfield. It has that kind of gunstock style handle with a clip point blade. This one's 135. They've done several uh, variants, several models, uh, different patterns over the years. Uh, this one is one of my favorites with one of my favorite handle materials they've done. This is a red micarta, red canvas here. Blade is uh, two and three quarters of an inch, 154 cm, full flat ground, just classic clip point shape. And to me, this one really has, you know, leans into that old school vibe a little more, especially the shield there uh, on the handle itself calls back to mind the uh, old school stuff, the bolstered end right there, same thing. Glow in the dark shield, not very old school. That's more new, new school, but it has that as well. And liner lock and a ball bearing flipping action for your modern conveniences. Or if you'd rather open it old school, you've got that long pull there on the front for your you know, typical two-handed opening right there. Great, great stuff. 
And because you mentioned Barlow and because these uh, have just come in, we got to talk about Carbon with a K, the new brand from Ken Onion, and his first model, a Barlow-inspired modern flipper. This is the Ahoy. $350 for this Knife Center exclusive that comes with desert ironwood handles. Very cool stuff. Uh, very cool to see the differences from one to the next two. That each one has a bit of a different flair. This one's a little lighter. It looks almost like rosewood in some, uh, some respects here. But very classy stuff. You got the anchor shield right there. Very intricate shield going on. And you've got modern conveniences. You've got your flipping. You've got your ball bearings. You've got your frame style or bolster style frame lock there. You've got a pocket clip. You've got dual long pulls on the blade. However, you're not really going to be able to get to them very easily if you wanted to. Ah, you can kind of see I'm pinching on the spine, but I didn't even get into the, uh, the fullers there. But this is, you know, it's not the traditional every man affordable Barlow at, you know, 350 bucks, but aesthetics wise, if that doesn't capture the, uh, the simpler Barlow times that you're remembering with a modern flair, I don't know what does. Check it out. Well, now we come to our lightning round for today. Uh, first questions from Roving Biologist. Uh, any recommendations for a woodworking marking knife? A uh, classic example is a sheep's foot blade on a case knife. You use it instead of a pencil for marking cut lines for cabinetry and fine joinery where accuracy matters. Love to know what's out there for modern options, preferably a thin sheep's foot blade with one-handed operation and modern steels. Thank you. Uh, first thing that came to mind, honestly, uh, was something, you know, kind of simple too, but in a great way, the QSP Penguin could be a really great option. This is a Knife Center exclusive right here for 65 bucks with an S35 VN blade. Uh, and I went with this versus the, uh, the base models because those come with D2 steel for, you know, very affordable, like in the $30 range, but you wanted, you know, more high tech steel, didn't you? You mentioned that. So this one right here is actually a really good bargain for S35. Very precise tip with the uh, straight edge of the blade for those marking cuts. But, you know, we're talking old school and we're talking blend of old and new here. And to me, it's not quite a two hander, but the ZT230. Is that a cool option right there? 20 CV steel, uh, 204 bucks is quite a bit more expensive but a detent joint style of slip joint. It's one hand openable if you kind of grip, grasp the blade and flick it out, you can do that. So that's an option. It's about as one handed as this one gets, but same style of blade there as that, uh, that penguin essentially. It's gonna do those marking cuts I think for you quite nicely. Next question comes from Nate K. Hey David, uh, had a personal question for you. What is your favorite folding knife you own? Um, my favorite, not my favorite because it's my favorite to carry, but the one with the most uh, kind of personal special relevance to me is was essentially my first good knife. And it was a Camillus BSA Whittler, much like a Stockman, but instead of the uh, spade blade, you had a small pen blade. And instead of the sheep's foot blade, you had a coping blade, basically a smaller, more precise, uh, narrower, more precise take on what the uh, sheep's foot blade can do. Fantastic knife made by Camilla Slay like said, uh, you know, faux jigged handles on it. If I could save any one thing from my collection, if that was you know, what I had to do, that would be the one right there. All right, now we come to our final question of the day, which is of course our most serious question of the day, which comes from Derek Wood. If, Ronald McDonald and the Hamburglar were trapped in the Burger King Palace, which lies on the edge of the French Fry Forest. Which knives would you recommend they each carry? We need, we need more submissions for most serious questions because this is what I'm resorting to answering now. <laughs> I'm having fun with it. I got something for you, but give me your most serious questions in the comments, please. Uh, continuing on. Uh, not only to escape the thwarting tyranny of the king and his lamenting burger guards. Why are they so sad? Low pay. That yeah, might be it. Uh, but also survive the salted dread of the French fry forest as they make their daring escape to safety of the golden arches of freedom. Uh, well, when moving through any sort of forested environment uh, while trying to avoid detection of you know, the Rosers or, you know, the military, whatever, trying to avoid detection. The key is good camouflage. 
And therefore, the closest thing I can get to you uh, to what we need here is the Flytanium Tater Song, a balisong knife with these kind of waffle cut. Crinkle cut. Crinkle cut handles. Yes, thank you, Thomas. Crinkle cut handles. Therein lies our first problem, though. Burger King, for, what was it? The Burger King Palace? Burger King doesn't do crinkle cut. So it's not a perfect recommendation, but it could help you through. Uh, might, you know, you could be able to hide behind it a little bit, break up your outline, of course. And if you do happen to be come upon by the enemy, maybe you could convince them when, you know, with the crinkle cuts, maybe you could convince them uh, you're an emissary of the White Castle, perhaps. And if not, it's a ballast song. So a little flourish, you might be able to uh, scare them away and make your escape. They are lamenting. They are lamenting after all. This is the best I got, folks. I hope it helps because, you know, I don't particularly enjoy uh, eating McDonald's all the time, but I got no will against Ronald McDonald or the Hamburglar, in fact. They're each just trying to get by, aren't they? That's all we've got for today. Send me your most serious questions, please. I would appreciate it. But that's all we've got today. Let me know what you thought of the answers down below. If you've got some alternate uh, answers, love to hear those as well. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our long running knife rewards program, which lets you earn up to 5% back, sometimes even more actually, uh, towards the purchase of a future knife. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.